your name is Hi. Your name is it's by your name we we are saved. Our sins are forgiven. Your name gives peace. Your name gives comfort in our lives. We thank you. Praise you. We just uh, have come together, God, to hear your word. Help us and guide us, Lord Jesus. We pray for people who are infected and affected by COVID. God, and there is a lot of fear and uncertainty going on. We just pray for your presence, mercy, God, your help, and peace in the hearts of people. We pray in Jesus' name. Yeah, today we are going to see about uh, fear. Because in these times, uh, many people, many people are in fear. They are, uh, most of the people, especially due to the uh, pandemic, the COVID crisis, seeing the news, hearing many different things from people. People have this fear, people have this uncertainty of their life. What's going to happen next? They see people are dying. Uh, they hear their friends or colleagues who have died, who have suffered. And they, are think, they are thinking, what can happen to me, my family? And it disturbs their, their peace. No. Isaiah 41, verse 10, it's a great verse. It says, uh, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. There are, uh, there are commands and promises uh, in this verse. Fear not is actually, in a, in a commanding way, God says not, not to fear. Because when we fear, we are actually keeping our focus away from God. Our focus is not on God. We are keeping our focus on the problem or the situation or, or, a, pe or a person. And God commands us not to fear and not to be anxious or dismayed or discouraged. And he reassures, he's saying, I am your God. And I will be strengthening you. I will help you. And I will uphold you. These are his promises that he will strengthen us, he will help us and uphold us in times of trials. People uh, experience fear for different reasons. Okay? There could be many reasons like people fear death, people fear heights, ghosts, future, what, what our future will be, fear of failures, fear of losing someone, or fear of uh, disease. Fear of uh, new new ventures or new things. Fear of uh, insects and animals. Fear of uh, some powerful people or government. There could be different types of fears, and uh, and Satan uh, uses uses our fear. When uh, when we have fear, then our capacity to focus on God and to receive receive from God gets very very less it, it can get paralyzed it can get it can get crippled and uh, even in this situation Satan basically Satan the devil and demons they basically want us our minds to be filled with uh, this fear and uncertainty they want us to think more about what's happening with COVID or what what are the effects happening the new strains coming so many like in, in news channels almost uh, all time uh, the, this is the news going on if someone is going to hear two three hours of news uh their, their mind can be filled with the uh, you know less hope unbelief and uncertainty so we have to be very careful and cautious so it doesn't mean that we should not care about what's happening we should know what's happening, but there's a you know there is a balance, there's a limit, and it should not it should not uh, fill our minds. It, is, it should not create doubt or unbelief in our hearts, because God has given us a great hope. It needs a different spirit in us. The world has a spirit. The 
world has a spirit and uh, it has its source from the evil spirit. All can be okay. It look, it can look okay. They can trust, you know, vaccines. They can trust uh, scientific methods. But uh, but we trust in God. We trust. Uh, we we have a different spirit. With a with a worldly spirit or a, a or a spirit which is from the which has a source from evil, uh, we we cannot have peace. Uh, we cannot have a have a heart of love. People are becoming selfish. People are becoming less loving in these times. They are thinking more about them and their family only, not about others. Am I safe? Am, is my family safe? What about what about that beyond that? What about the people in the church? What about the people in the neighborhood? The, the colleagues? People are becoming um, self-loving. Uh, yeah, so for us, it needs a different spirit and uh, we need to trust and uh, follow God. what God has already said, promises, and uh, exercising faith in, in, in those promises. So we will see two, three things today, uh, two, three different portions where we can see that there is fear, fear among people, but uh, that someone overcame it. We can learn, we can learn from those portions. Uh, We'll see David and Goliath first. First Samuel 17. Everyone knows the story, but there are many. There could be few details which could be not uh, new for us, or we can we can remind us again. And uh, here is Goliath. Goliath. He's a. Uh, it says, you know, there are four verses in one Samuel 17, just saying about Goliath and what he has. One Samuel. Uh, 17 verses 4 and 7, it says uh, about, it just says about Goliath and uh, what he has won. Uh, so he is from Gath and he has a height of six cubits and a span. He has a helmet of bronze on his head and he is uh, armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. One shekel is around 11 grams. You know, 5,000 shekels is like 51, around 50 to 51 kilos. Uh, that's the armory he's wearing in his, in his body. Okay? And uh, then he has bronze armor on his legs, which is separate. And then he has a javelin of bronze. Just the spear of the javelin, it, it says that uh, in verse 7, it is weighing 600 shekels of iron. 600 seconds is like 6 kg of iron just at the spear end. That's the weight he had. So he is very big and he's uh, covered overall, well protected by bronze arm, armory from head to toe. And he has a great spear, he has a great uh, shield. Bronze actually talks of judgment. Uh, the metal bronze talks of judgment. So he is. Uh, so if you see naturally, there's a there's a very big giant in front of you, and he is well protected. It's very difficult for anyone to defeat him. So what is this is a war between Philistine and, and Israel, and uh, and this and Goliath is coming every day, morning and evening for forty days. He's coming and he's saying that send us a man. And me and the man from Israel will fight, and whoever wins will win the war. And uh, what's the what's the response of the people of Israel? In verse uh, twenty four, it says, you know, okay, we'll we'll see seven also. In verse seven. Sorry, verse 11. Verse 11, it says, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So the king of Israel and the men of Israel, they are, they are greatly afraid by seeing this man and his threats. And in verse uh, 20, uh, 24, it says, All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. 
so there was no not one man who didn't who was not afraid including the king the king and all the man was afraid and now david comes why why david came his father his father jesse he has eight sons three sons the first elder three sons they are going to this war david was sent to give uh, some food some food to them and also to a commander so he goes he obeys now while talking to the people he hears what uh, goliath says and see his uh, response in, in verse 26b by the later portion he says uh okay i'll read the full verse verse 26 1 samuel 17 verse 26 and david said to the men who stood by him what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from his way? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You can see a different uh, perspective in, in David. When people are fearing, when people are seeing him as a giant and a very great man and afraid, uh, David is seeing him as a uncircumcised man who is defying, defying against God's army. So he is seeing themselves as God's people and God's army. And no one can defy and him as just as an uncircumcised man. So he's not uh, seeing people in the nat natural, no, not in the natural way, but he has the he has spiritual eyes. He has a different spirit to see people. And uh, I'll read two more verses. It's, it's great. Uh, so then there is a conversation happening between David and Saul. And before this, if you see David's brothers, David's brother gets angry upon David for staying there and talking about, about what's happening. They are telling him, them, uh, him to go. And even his father, just see that David's brothers or father never knew David as God, God saw him. David's father didn't send him to war, but he sent him just to give food. David's brothers were angry. They, they didn't even consider David's words. And then there is a conversation happening between David and Saul. And uh, in verse 37, And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of lion and from the paw of bear will, will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. So basically, Saul is asking, you are just a small guy, you are just a youth, how will you fight him? And he says that God has delivered me from lions and bears when I was keeping the sheep as a shepherd. And, and he has uh, such faith, and not just, you know, theoretical faith, he has an experiential faith. You know, when, when, there was, when there were bad times, uh, uh, he was a faithful shepherd, he didn't leave the sheep. There was like there were lions, there were bears, and he went after the lion. He went after the other bear. Uh, he defeated and uh, made them dead. And he he attributes that to God. He doesn't say in my own strength I defied them, I I killed them. He says the God delivered them to me. So he's he's uh, fully aware that it's not by his own strength. It's it's by God's strength. And I have already experienced God's working in my life because he delivered this, uh, this these bears, these lions in my, in my hands before. And verse 45, this is a conversation between David and Goliath. David, David is saying, like, uh, actually David is just going with a staff, you know, the shepherd's staff and some stones, some small stones from the river. Saul gave him his armor, which, is, which could protect him, but David did not take it. He said, uh, it is not tested. I can't, I don't want to wear them. And uh, seeing the stick, the shepherd's staff, uh, Goliath is asking, am I a dog that you, you, are, you are coming to me with a stick? He's basically mocking David. He's despising David. See David's response in verse 45. He says, then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. So you can uh, see the relationship he has with God. You can see the faith he has, he has with God. 
uh, how he sees his own people, his own nation, uh, and uh, that makes his words, his confession. And uh, he goes there with a stick and few a sling and few stones, and uh, he's keeping his faith in God. His focus is never away from God. His focus was always on God. His focus was not on Goliath. His uh, people, the people in Israel, were fearful because their focus was on Goliath, his strength, how he was protected, what he is saying. But uh, David's focus was on God and his promises and what he has done in his life before. And we know the story. He he defeated Goliath and he took his own sword and killed Goliath and uh, took his head. And uh, we'll see another portion in okay, Numbers 13. So here we see there are 12 spies they are being sent. God tells to Moses, uh, God has promised a land, a land which will be flowing with milk and honey, land of Canaan, to be, to be occupied and dwelt for, for Israel. So God tells Moses, send, send some spies to this land. Okay, send some spies to this land. And Moses selects uh, 12 people. So there are 12 tribes, one, one person from each tribe. And these are uh, not normal people. They are heads, heads of each tribe. Okay. Uh, it means that they have authority. They are powerful people in their, in their own uh, tribe. And they are old and, or maybe you can say they are experienced and mature because they are heads, heads of the tribes. And 12 people are going. And uh, so they are going to spy the land for various things. You know, uh, in verses 18, what, Numbers 13, verses 18 to 20. Okay, to see that whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, whether they are few or many, whether the land they dwell in good or bad, whether the cities that they dwell in are camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, whether the, there are trees in it or not, be of good courage. Bring some fruit. They, they have been told when you go and spy and come back, bring, bring some fruit of the land. And it's the season of uh, grapes, first ripe grapes. So they see all things, these 12 people, uh, heads of tribes go, they see all things and they come, even they even come back with the fruit. They bring the uh, grapes, they bring the pomegranates and, and figs uh, with them. Uh, so see the, uh, let's see the response. So uh, it takes 40 days for them to spy out the land. In verse 25, they come. Verse 26, they say, uh, and they came to Moses and Aaron, and to all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. Okay. We'll go to 27. And they told him, when we came to the land to which you sent us, it flows with milk and honey and this is its fruit. So these people are saying okay, that, yes, indeed, th this is a land which is flowing with milk and honey. So they agree to that. But then, then then now they are sharing their, you know, their doubts and unbelief. Now they are saying, however, the people who dwell in the land are strong and the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Later they will say about like Nephilims. The Nephilims are like uh, giants, uh, big, uh, big people, very big people like, like we see Goliath. And uh, they are not easy to defeat, uh, naturally speaking. And uh, so they, they see Amalekites dwell in the land of Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, the hill country, Canaanites. So they are seeing different kinds of people and they are saying they are, they, these are big people. They, they are fortified cities. And they are big men, giant men. And uh, they also say then, like we, in front of them, we will look like grasshoppers will be very small and uh, we we can't we can't do that we can't defeat them verse 30 caleb so caleb is one of the first uh, tri uh, head of the tribes who goes there and uh, yeah he 
he's of the tribe of Judah. Okay, and Joshua also goes. Joshua is of the tribe of Ephraim. So Caleb, verse thirty says, but Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, "Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome." So Caleb also goes with them, but he sees them in a completely different way. Yes, they are giants. Yes, there are many different people. Yes, they have fortified uh, cities, uh, and it's not easy to, you know, it's not naturally speaking, it's not easy to defeat them. But what is he saying? He he quieted the people before Moses first, and then said, "Let us go up at once. We can go immediately, and we can occupy it because we we are able to overcome it because he understands that the God has already delivered that." delivered that place for us like we see david understood that the philistine was delivered to him already like the lion and the bear and here caleb has understood that you know god has already given that place these people uh, are we, we can defeat them because god has all, already delivered that place and these people to us and uh, there the other people the other 10 people their response you know, was Verse 31, then the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. So they, they were seeing very naturally, with just just with the eyes, not, not, not spiritually, not through the spirit. No, we, we can have really different ways of seeing. The world will see naturally. No? Uh, like like that, so uh, if, if a person has money or possessions or, or uh, good standing in the society, he's considered well and good. No, that's that's just natural, but God doesn't see that way. So people here see the physical stature of people, the cities, and they are like afraid and fearful. Now, because of the report of these people, these uh, tribesmen, the whole congregation of Israel became doubtful. They became unbelieving and they started complaining and grumbling against God. And uh, they were rebelling against God. So they were complaining and grumbling, but they were actually rebelling against God's plan to go, go to the promised land. So Numbers 14, okay. We'll see verses 1 to 4. It says, Then all the congregation raised a loud cry. And the people wept that night, and all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in the wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land? They're questioning God. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives, our little ones will become afraid. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. So because they heard a wrong report and uh, they believed it, uh, they believed their heads, they, they started questioning even God. And they are thinking, uh, like they are thinking, our families, our wives and children will die. They never thought, like, will God allow us all to die? Will, will, will God have the same thought? Uh, will God bring us to a place to allow us to die? So that shows the understanding they had of God. And they are thinking, let us cho choose a different leader and let us go back to Egypt, where they were in bondage, where they were in slavery. And now, uh, We'll just read two two verses. Okay. Verse nine. Okay. Numbers fourteen nine. This is Joshua's response. He says, "Only do not rebel against God, and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Okay, their protection is removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them." So Joshua is saying, "Do not rebel against God. Do not fear the pro the." Protection of the people is removed because God is with us and they are bread for us. See how Joshua sees and, uh, and how he talks to the people. And uh, we will see verse 24. This is about Caleb. So God is saying, but but myself, God is basically saying, because all these people doubted. And it says that these people tested God 10 times. 
in 10 different times they complained grumbled and tested god even after seeing all the miracles all the deliverance uh, they witnessed in the uh, in the red sea in the wilderness when they came out of egypt even after seeing all those things they tested god 10 times through their rebellion through the grumbling and complaining so god said i will not i'm not going no one in the, in that group in the, in the people in the congregation will be coming into the promised land so it was the children or the descendants who ended up in the promised land and more, uh, the most of those people all of those people basically died and Caleb and Joshua were, were allowed to enter verse 24 it says of Caleb but my servant Caleb because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully I will bring into the land into which he went his, dis his descendants shall possess it so Caleb had a different spirit. Joshua had a different spirit. David had a different spirit. People, many other people were fearful. These, these men, they, they, they knew God. They had a relationship with God. They followed God fully. They obeyed to God fully. They knew about God's deliverance. And they had a different spirit. And in these times, we, we also need to be in, in such a spirit with uh, completely trusting in God's, God's promises. And our, it, our spirit and our thoughts will, will show us, show in our confession, how we talk, what is the response. There will be people, maybe in your class, classrooms, or in your workplace, who will be ex exhibiting fear, who will be exhibiting uncertainty and who will be like, uh, who has faced a maybe very challenging time, who has lost a loved one. And maybe God has placed us in those places to give comfort to them, to share the truth to them, to say, you know, there is still hope. We have a God who is living and he can deliver us. He can protect us. He can keep us. And these words will make a, big difference in, in their life in how they see the situation you know, uh, we can see this covid crisis as a change or maybe in any other uh, this is one of the situation and there could be many other situations in the lives of people they could look as giants like like Goliath, like this nephilims in the, in the land of canaan but uh, we have a different spirit and we can overcome those giants with a different spirit because God has delivered uh, those things unto us. We need not fear. Uh, and also, you know, uh, we can put, we can cast all our burdens to God. If we have these burdens on our shoulders, we will not be able to take it. We, we are weak, but we can, through prayer, through prayer, we can cast our burdens to God. God, you take this burden and you handle it. And we are trusting you. We don't need to be fearful. We don't need to be anxious. Philippians 4, 6, 7. Uh, it's always a great verse for us. Do not be anxious about anything. It says anything. Whatever happens. So tomorrow, maybe there could be a death in my relative family or in my own family. Maybe a dear friend. It could happen, but are we, are we going to fear? Are we going to be anxious? It doesn't mean we should not uh, we should not be concerned. We should be concerned. We should be cautious. We should know the facts. But but our our mind is uh, not focused on those things. Our mind is focused on God, His word, what He has told, His promises. And the hope he has, he has given us. And uh, there are there are few ways uh, we can we can focus keep our focus on God. Okay, one small uh, one more point I will share. Like when we we all know about the storm. You know, Jesus and disciples were were in the boat, and Jesus was sleeping, and the disciples were there, and the storm came was very fierce the water came in the boat the disciples were all uh, they got afraid and they started they started to cry out uh, they started to cry out jesus uh, 
they started to wake up jesus and they thought they can they can die and uh, the response of jesus was like uh, like you are of little faith where is your faith jesus is basically saying you know yes there is storm uh, yes there is water coming into the boat but but i am with you like we saw in isaiah 41 time i am with you i will strengthen you i will uphold you i will help you fear not so we have jesus with us the water can come in the flood can come in god doesn't say i will water will not come in god doesn't say your your life will not be uh, will be problem problem free there will be problems but god says i am i am with you i will help you we need not fear we 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 don't need to fear the people or situations or the the crisis going on but we are called to fear god in, in proverbs 1 the fear the fear of god is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom and that fear is not a worldly fear the fear is a reverent fear knowing god as the most high knowing god as my creator and my father we have a reverent fear towards him and uh, when we have reverent fear that we we value his word his commandments and we obey his commandments so that way we will have life and that's wisdom and that's knowledge our we need to understand that our life is not about us we can have our plans and desires our own things but uh, jesus didn't uh, die on the cross for for our own desires and plans uh and he has purchased us by his blood so now now we are living for his purpose his his will his desire if we are going to live for our desires uh, and our will even after the death and resurrection of jesus it is it is very selfish you know it means that we haven't understood the sacrifice jesus did on the cross so god has a plan for us and god has already ordained the plan we are not choosing any plan he has already ordered is just for us to know what it is and to obey obey it and uh, so for that you know, we we there are some things uh, which we can do regularly this has to be a lifestyle so that we can have a focus on god and that we need not fear the things uh, which are happening in the world like worship worship in god uh, it should be a part of our life word god's word reading bible we get to hear hear from god we get to know god much better much better as we read we get guidance and comfort through the word we get wisdom and knowledge through the word then prayer we we talk to god we share our burdens we give our burdens to him we give thanks uh, we ask for guidance we intercede for people and fellowship fellowship with people no it's it's not good to be alone no? in the sense uh, if there are opportunities to connect with people who know christ it's it's always good to spend time with them connect with them like like we are uh, connecting here to know god to pray and uh, we should always use these opportunities because it helps our faith and uh, god god does some things through through such uh, fellowship you now we can pray for each other we can know each other more and we can help each other guide and encourage each other and serving serving also comes through fellowship Uh, no one can we can't be lo- lone wolves we can't be uh, it's always uh, good to serve in a church or in a team uh, because there is fellowship serving uh, serving alone it can easily discourage us and evangelism when we when we you know when we uh, we can feel sometimes very low and discourage and when we go to evangelize when we give tracts to people 
share about what's going to people. And when we hear what they are going through, you know, we actually we get so much encouraged doing that. Uh, that that day, that time, I was able to give God's word for that person. He was he was, uh, and we can we can remember that he was feeling low, and uh, uh, I was able to use God's word to give comfort. You know? Those things bring us great encouragement, and it can change the day how the day goes. So so these things, you know, worship, word, prayer fellowship, serving, evangelism. If these things are there in every day in our, in our life, our focus will be on God. And, uh, and let us let us keep news or newspapers or hearing people, uh, opinions from people, hearing what doctor says to, to a limit. Okay? Some people I see, they are sitting like four or five hours before the television. Just seeing seeing the news, what's happening. Today, elections, people are just sitting in front of the TV, what's happening. You will, you can get that same election result at, at in the evening or in the night in five minutes. Whatever you're going to see from the morning to the evening, the result will be the, is going to be the same at the end of the day. Instead of spending five, six hours on the TV, I can just spend five, ten minutes at the end of the day just to know the same result. So how we spend our time, when and what we share, see, it matters. You know why I learned this? Because I used to see cricket matches spending long hours. And uh, and I used, in my school days, college days, I used to see matches for like six hours, seven hours. So I didn't know God that time. But then now nowadays, sometimes I've seen that. Then uh, now I sometimes see just highlights. In 10 minutes, I can see the crux of the match and I can get the, the result as well. I don't need to spend five, six, four hours to see. So I'm just applying that in other things as well. So seeing cricket is not a sin, but but uh, wasting time. You know, God has given that six, eight hours. If I'm going to share something, something from God's word to a person, if I'm going to call someone who may be worried or discouraged and following and encouraging him. Or maybe I'm trying to help a person in another way. I can use time in so many other ways. You know, I can read, I can pray. Those five, six hours, if I'm going to use just 10, 15 minutes and it is going to give me five, six hours, that's that's a very wise way to use my, use my time. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the message. Let's not fear people or situations or the crisis uh, because we have a different spirit. Uh, God is with us. God has delivered things to us. And think about this. See, God created us. Do you think we can, we will die before the time God has appointed us for? God has a plan for us. He will use us. We are in the plan. God will not allow us to die before the time ends, before the, the time he has ordained. So we don't need to worry about death. Yes, there will be tribulation. There will be many details, many issues. But God is there. God is with us like he was in the boat. And, and he will help us. He will strengthen us. So let's let's endure this. Let's go ahead. And there will be people around you who will be sharing discouragement, sharing this is happening, that is happening. They will be in fear. And uh, God can use us to speak to them. To, to give words of encouragement, to give words of hope. Yeah. So, any any questions, any comments you can share? We can have five, ten minutes and then we can, we can pray on it. Several, you want to share something from this portion? No, no, brother. I just uh, want to ask one question. Like, as in my one of my friend now, where I go to church, his father was the pastor. Okay, so Subhash Mane, he he died in in the last pandemic in August. Okay, just because of this pandemic only he died. And then he suddenly we met, and uh, this year only I uh, joined that church. Okay. 
so okay. he started asking me why only my dad he, he like why only my dad why jesus mamma ko kyun nahi unhone kuch kiya mere dada ko kyun kyunki wo to pastor the wo preach karte the why god that like this and now he completely stop like wo prayer bhi nahi karta aisa so mujhe pata hi nahi what to answer hai i couldn't even answer i just uh, told him that half faith something for good purpose only he called your dada so you let me know that what i should tell him what i should encourage him yeah see uh see there are some some things which we can't fully explain you know like when yeah, exactly. we were, when we were uh, starting a new church in a place in mumbai there was a family we were doing bible study that family is not they didn't come fully into faith but they gave their place to do bible study and uh, we did bible study there for one year and in that family two people died in a span of one or two months and they started to question the faith you're coming here you're praying they told us to pray as well and we prayed but still the they died uh, there was one mm-hmm. old man and there was one young guy young guy he he had some kidney issues he was in dialysis we went we prayed for him he was very glad uh, on hearing the gospel the prayer but they they question if you if your god is real if god is real and you prayed and uh, this young guy who should be living should not have died why did god allow him to die so they they kind of rebelled or they were complaining asking questions Mm. still they were like kind of unbelievers they were not fully into faith so it is understandable so we didn't have any words to say to them we can we just were there we were uh, we just took part in the things they were going on and uh, uh yeah so what i can just say is you know god knows god knows things which we don't know some things we we can see only from our eyes god has the big, big picture no i'm not saying i would not say that i would not say that good thing that this its dad was lost um, but you know uh, if god has allowed it he he has a reason he has a purpose for it and we will know we will god will show us at the right time and also maybe we at this point maybe we are not mature enough to understand it so there will be a time god will show him to reveal him uh, if he pleases to to show he can god can choose not to show as well i will share one uh, one thing which i read in a in a biography okay this is about uh, there's a lady I, i forgot her name uh, but uh, the the book is the title of the book is the town way she is a lady from pakistan she got to know god she trust uh, believe in god her whole family told her to go away uh, they if they find they could kill her something like that so she went she stayed with one of her relatives and uh, the the so there is a couple okay the a guy and the love a man and a woman who is her relative and the woman is a believer a secret believer the husband doesn't know that she is a believer but uh, this lady and the relative woman they know each other that both are believers they had a good good relations that's how she was staying there and after some days the uh, the relative woman died she was fine but she suddenly died and uh, this lady was asking god i'm not going to talk to you you she was the only lady in the relative uh, who was also a believer and she was helping me and i i don't have anyone why did you take her away I, uh, i'm not going to talk to you un- unless you are going to reveal you know what god showed her after a few days maybe through a dream or a vision she he showed her that her husband was meeting that lady that relative girl every day and that relative uh, what never shared this to the lady that my husband is abusing me every day in that tree in audition god showed the scars she had 
maybe in her back or some parts of the body and god god didn't want that to continue god didn't want uh this poor relative girl to to be abused by her husband continuously she, she was not able to take it physically so she took she took her to heaven he took her to heaven uh in that time so then she understood okay god god did a good thing in the sense you know now where is she she is not in a place of abuse she is not in a abusive relationship she is in heaven where there is no there is no tears there is no suffering there is no disease in the presence of god many times we fail to see you know yes there is death but because we are children of god we are believers after death where are we going we are in a better place we are in a place of glory we are in a place where there is joy where there is where there is a presence of god so if the pastor son will understand that you know that god has more wisdom than us and if he has done that will be a purpose let us trust god in difficult times when we don't understand god let us uh, believe god in what what he does because we know god is good god is true god is eternal and uh, <clears throat> and second thing is that when we die yes physically there my dad is not with me but but he is in a better place uh, need to understand that is is he college going like what is the age yes is? yes first he used to do job he is 25 years now he left his job because his mama he, he she stays alone and even to look after the church he left the job and now he is doing nursing and her uh, elder sister she has become her elder sister and jeju has become the pastor now they lead the church they both even they both left the job from pune and they have come here now now they lead us and you know that that's where the understanding knowing knowing god and his character is very you know it's important because these things will happen big storms will come and in his life he will face more storms this is this is one of the, one of it tomorrow anything can happen and we can't we can't question god and he uses things for for his glory exactly yeah. thank you brother yeah welcome yes dominic Dominic, you want to share something? You are muted. We can't hear you. Dominic, you are there. We can't hear. Some issue. We'll ask, uh, Shilpi, Shilpi, so, uh, you have any points to share? Mm, actually, I was thinking about both the examples, David and uh, 12 Spies. So I was thinking that uh, in both the examples, their focus was on God. Kolya, uh, he was so big, huge, and... but uh, david he was not scared of them uh, he was not scared of him and he put his trust in god and same like uh, we see in joshua and caleb's lives both were trusting god and not like other 10 spies mm. so i was thinking about one example from new testament example of peter when he was walking on the water uh, his eyes was fixed on jesus and he was walking smoothly but when the suddenly one storm comes his focus changes from jesus to that storm and again he got scared so it is important to keep our focus on jesus during any situation of our life yes. instead of believing in our abilities what we can do we need to focus on god yeah, yeah. that's a good good example as well also those point you shared how we can uh, keep our focus on god was good worship reading bible by praying serving fellowship evangelism yeah so you see you can ask many christians you know how you are spending your time 
in your home because we are we are mostly in home now or or maybe like Cheryl is in college like like we have more more time nowadays if we if we analyze our, how we are spending our time I think even some Christians I think I believe that they are spending more on TV you have IPL mm-hmm. now you have movies you have uh, uh, you have now Netflix and Netflix and Amazon Prime many people are uh, seeing uh, maybe serials some so there are many many ways to waste time and uh, so much entertainment so much things happening around and i'm sure you know devil devil has planned these things just for us to waste time and, uh, it is it has to be we have to be very wise what we are doing we are doing with our time i was also looking in my life like i could i could have spent is much better you know, but, uh, we could have uh, looking back we can say maybe i could have instead of seeing wasting so much time and so on so things i could have done these these things those things are eternal you know, when we do evangelism when we read bible when we do prayer these things are eternal and uh, other things which we do whether we are going to see serial or tv or internet or any any other thing which is worldly uh, it is temporary and basically we are like wasting time we are uh, we are in end times and time is precious for us yeah thanks for the for the point yes don't make your that we are still unable to hear you if you are using a headphone maybe you can try disconnecting it just talk directly or maybe you can type in the chat box maybe is coming back i was seeing this uh, movie called uh, pilgrim's progress no? you know there is a book called pilgrim's progress and they have made a movie and it is in different languages english hindi and many i shared to some nepali people some hindi people and i was seeing in tamil and uh, it's really wonderful you know it's uh, it shows uh, as portrayed things wonderfully i would like to see that movie fully it's like around 1 and 1/2 uh, hour and 45 minutes or 50 minutes so there is a character called christian and he is trying to go to heaven he has a burden and what are things he is experiencing on the way how devil plans not to not uh, uh like discouraging him on the way not allowing him to go to heaven to reach heaven to do the things of god so it's, maybe i'll share with you guys and you, you can so see when you have time so, and those okay. things actually and uh, these links you know you can share with your friends and uh, they can get to know jesus through them yes zavier now we can hear share or you can hear me yes sir. keep uh-huh. your mic uh, mic here yes yes we can hear yeah yeah actually i was just wanting to speak about uh, it was a beautiful portion uh, first of all that you have taken on uh, second chronicles uh, uh, like david and goliath like you know and uh, the only people who have faith can uh, go ahead and uh, we also see the same thing with joshua and caleb they were men of faith because they had all the characters of worship word prayer fellowship and a serving attitude a serving heart and uh, uh, just i like that portion but well and also i was thinking about that point about this lady who sheril she spoke about this guy who is uh, uh, a pastor's son who lost his father and like sometime we question god why did you do that and uh, i had heard about a story of uh, uh, of a man i don't remember his name maybe robert or something 
uh, who at a very young age lost his father and he had a bitterness towards uh, towards god and uh, and one of the, and, and he used to hate people also who were preachers of god's word and one of these uh, uh, days like you know this is during 1956 or something around around that period 1950s or something uh, when billy graham was a great preacher of god like he had gone with a motive he had around 10 people and they had a pistol with them and he had gone in that uh, there was a great meeting held by uh, billy graham so he had told his men to spread out and when he will give you he, when he will uh, in this meeting when he will just uh, just tell them like to shoot so you go ahead and shoot uh, we will go ahead and shoot a uh, people and he will hit hit this man of god person like you know billy graham and also they had spread around that area and uh, and as he was preaching so this was the intention like you know of that small kid who had grown up to become a uh, who had grown up to become a, a warrior a gang a gang leader and uh, and he had a bitterness towards god so one day when he went to this billy graham meeting with the intention to kill him and and as billy graham was preaching his heart got converted and uh, and uh, and then he went and and he surrendered to uh, he surrendered his life to, to 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 Jesus Christ and he he repented for all that uh, all the things that he had done and along with him all the nine people who uh, eight people i think so uh, surrendered his life to uh, to Jesus uh, to Jesus Christ except for one of them and the point here was like you know he had a question like you know why did god take my father away and uh, and and i don't remember exactly the story but it says like you know that god revealed it to him or it was revealed to his fa- uh, billy graham i don't remember exactly but the story was this like you know that uh, he had he was going through some trouble times like he had a ill health some health issues and uh, and because of the health issues like you know uh, his father would not be able to continue and that's why his father had taken 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 him away uh, so when when he got to understand that point of view point he just he said he surrendered his life to christ and he became a follower of jesus christ so sometimes we don't know why things happen in our life so it is better to like you know just uh, 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 give god your life and say whatever the circumstances and one thing i can be assured i can, i can assure you that when you go through tough times he just makes you stronger and stronger uh that's yes. that's my point yes. yeah that's amazing uh, testimony you know, which you shared people get transformed in very traumatic ways i was thinking of jim elliot as well jim elliot is a missionary who he was from america he goes to this tribe who are like a very dangerous tribe in Ecuador. Jim Elliot and I think four other friends along with their wives, they go there and they may, they are unable to go to that place directly. So they make a helicopter. They stay in a place, different place. They make a helicopter right from scratch. Then they travel by the helicopter. They go there and they put, uh, initially they to make contact with that tribe people. to make some friendship they are giving some food to those people from that helicopter uh, week by week they come there they give food they go and uh, you know then one one day they decide to go by themselves let's go into the tribe because we have given some food maybe they will be allowing us they go there they are in the seashore five people five men are in the seashore their wives are back in the in the in that place and uh, the these tribes men they kill all the five people so they go there they are not able to share the gospel you know uh, they they but even before sharing something they they are they are dead the tribes men kill them so if you see that uh, you can really question god like you can think uh, like why did god allow these people even if he had shared to someone and there has been some converts and after that if he had died it could be some of some meaning but 
even without sharing, after all this trouble coming from America, leaving his maybe studies and job, making a helicopter, you know, giving food, and taking so much time, many years, and the reaching people the first time, and they are dead. No sharing has happened. No relationship has happened. So what is the meaning? What is the purpose? So the, the newspapers published, what a waste, what a waste of life. And so many, the, what happened, you know, like 40, 50, many other people decided to give their life for missions. They came, they went to many different parts of uh, maybe South America, the places of the world. So, so we don't know, you know how God works. Uh, I think Isaiah 55 says, no, his thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. His ways are much higher than our ways. So he has great wisdom. So we well, it's a, I think it's a great time for us and uh, let's have a, a prayer let's end with prayer any any prayer request you have we can pray for that person the pastor's son uh, Cheryl you can, can you share his name you can just pray for him. Uh, yes brother Stephen okay, Stephen and uh, any other prayer request anyone has we can pray now can just share the request. We can pray for no, that. Yes. Okay. Okay, should we can pray? We can pray for Stephen for that he will uh, get to know God, will be saved, and also for the, the pandemic and any other the main, the pandemic crisis going on for the cities. For the families who have lost people as infections, we'll pray an end. के पास यीशु के नाम से परमेश्वर हम आपके पास आते हैं इस वक्त इस समय के लिए हम धन्यवाद करते हैं पिता हम मांगते हैं परमेश्वर जो हमने सुना परमेश्वर हमें मदद करना पूरे हफ्ते उस पे हम मनन कर सके परमेश्वर हम मांगते हैं स्टीफन के लिए परमेश्वर कि आप उसे हेल्प करना परमेश्वर सारे सवालों के जवाब परमेश्वर हमारे पास नहीं होते लेकिन हम जानते हैं पिता कि आप उसे उसके सवालों के जवाब आप दे सकते हो परमेश्वर आप उससे बातें करना परमेश्वर आप उसे बताना परमेश्वर जो चीजें उसके लाइफ में हुई है पिता उनके पीछे एक मकसद है परमेश्वर उस मकसद को जानने के लिए पिता आप उसके जीवन में कार्य करना उसे समझाना परमेश्वर आप उससे बातें करना कम्फर्ट करना उस एरिया में पिता होली स्पिरिट आप बेस्ट कम्फर्ट हो उस एरिया में उसे कम्फर्ट करना परमेश्वर और उस चीज़ से उसे बाहर लाने के लिए परमेश्वर आप हेल्प करना पिता हम मांगते इस वक्त पिता हमारे कंट्री के लिए परमेश्वर की हर एक स्टेट जो सिचुएशन चल रही है पिता उन सभी को परमेश्वर आपके हाथों में देते हैं इस पेंडेमिक में परमेश्वर आप लोगों को संभालना उनके नीड्स आप जानते हो पिता जो हमारे फैमिलीज में जो भी इश्यूज है पिता जो भी हेल्थ इश्यूज चल रहे हैं पिता जो भी कोविड पेशेंट है जिस भी किसी बीमारी से जा रहे पिता उन लोगों को ब्लेस करना प्रोटेक्ट करना परमेश्वर हीलिंग लेके आना परमेश्वर इस समय में परमेश्वर वो आपको जान सके पिता आपके पीछे चल सके पिता और आपको और जान सके ऐसे आप कार्य करना परमेश्वर पूरी तरीके से परमेश्वर उन फैमिलीज को विजडम देना डॉक्टर्स को विजडम देना कि वो राइट ट्रीटमेंट कर सके परमेश्वर और इस स्टेट के सारे स्टेट्स के पिता मिनिस्टर्स को हम आपके हाथों में देते हैं हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स को आपके हाथों में देते हैं परमेश्वर आप उन्हें ब्लेस करना उन्हें विजडम देना पिता कि वो वाइसफुली डिसीजन सारे ले सके परमेश्वर सब कुछ आपके हाथों में देते हैं परमेश्वर इस बाइबल स्टडी को आपके हाथों में देते हैं परमेश्वर हेल्प करना पिता कि जैसे हमने एग्जाम सुने परमेश्वर उसके उसी तरह से परमेश्वर हमारी आके भी पिता आपकी ओर फिक्स रहे परमेश्वर हम फोकस अपना फोकस ना भूले परमेश्वर और आपके पीछे चले परमेश्वर हर एक चीज के द्वारा परमेश्वर जैसे हमने सुना वर्शिप के द्वारा प्रेयर के द्वारा परमेश्वर इवेंजलिज्म वर्ड ऑफ गॉड रीड करने के द्वारा परमेश्वर हर एक चीज के द्वारा हम आपके पीछे चले ऐसे आप हमें हेल्प करना परमेश्वर और उस फोकस हमेशा आपके ऊपर है हमारी आइज आपके ऊपर फिक्स रहे परमेश्वर इससे करना हर एक सिचुएशन में हमें हेल्प करना लीड करना गाइड करना परमेश्वर सब कुछ आपके हाथों में देते हैं इस पूरे बाइबल स्टडी को आपके हाथों में देते हैं लेन इनको ब्लेस करना उसके फैमिली को प्रोटेक्ट करना ब्लेस करना परमेश्वर और लोगों को आने के लिए परमेश्वर आप हेल्प करना इसमें जोड़ सके पिता और सुन सके परमेश्वर ऐसे कार्य आप करना पिता सब कुछ आपके हाथों में देते हैं पिता यशु के नाम से मांगते हैं सुनो ग्रहण कर आमें। आमें।